It's Nate Newton. Nate Newton, you remember Nate? We were here talking right after the Super Bowl. We said we'd be back, and here we are right after the Cowboys draft. And when Nate is on here, he likes to look right at the camera and say... Let me tell you something. Man, I've missed this, Rad. I've I've been through some ups and downs. Uh, but you know the thing about it, Rad? When you ask for something, be careful what you ask for. I wanted to do a double knee replacement. And mm. Lordy Jesus, it took the Lord to bring me through it. My beautiful wife, Michelle... Boy, but I'm back up, Brad. Let me tell I, I'm you. I'm so about glad, it. and you're you're you're, uh, you're mobile, and you're and you're re recovering, and and you're and you're ready. Are you ready to play again, Nate? Oh man, I'm ready to bring some thunder, boy. I got like two plays in me. That's to run out on the field, get ran over, and run back off the field. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's all you need, man. Yeah, get, get my check on I, Tuesday. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, get that big check. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. Uh, we uh, we kept up with you, you know, via the social media. You were great to keep posting, and, and it looked like as difficult as it was, uh, all things went well in all seriousness, didn't they, Nate? Yeah, um, and you know what, Rad? And if you give me a chance here, let me say this, and let me tell y'all something. If you have any trying things about, like, say, high blood, diabetes, anywhere where they have to give you uh, blood thinners, they cannot give you, uh, it's not suggested that they give you any anti-inflammatories. And if you can't have that, that slows down the healing process. And uh, what it did for me was I'm trying to eat, I'm trying to drink, but having those uh, blood thinners and not having the uh, anti-inflammatories kept me in a bunch of pain, so I had to just kept changing medicines. Thank God for the doctors and their assistants that were helping me. And it took me like two to three, maybe four weeks before I really got my medicine adjusted. And then uh, at the end of about four weeks, I found out I was dehydrated because I'm trying to figure out this pain management. Uh, my Luckily, my rehab people always found a way to get me uh, working and get me going. And I went into the hospital for like a day, Rad. And uh, they gave me two bags of um, fluid. And when yeah. I walked out of the hospital, boy, I made a vow to myself because I was feeling so good because it was all about I did not maintain the fluids and the proper foods at the time. And uh, when I walked out of the hospital, man, two or three weeks ago, I had the surgery on March 19th. About four, three and a half weeks after that, I was in the hospital for like maybe six, seven hours getting that fluid. When I walked up out of there, man, I ain't even looked back, man. I threw my walker away. I don't even know where that's at. I threw my walker away. <laughs> I've been walking, been bending. My rehab people have been beautiful. I mean, if we, if y'all were our sponsors, I could give out y'all names. But since y'all ain't paying Spencer Bass yeah. and my boys, Tom, the money, we ain't gonna mention you. I just say yeah, my we'll rehab get, people yeah, we'll are get good. It. We'll, we'll work on getting them as a sponsor because <laughs> yes, you are you have a great testimonial right there, yes. Nate. That's fantastic. And, man, we're glad to have you back. We're glad you're healthy. I know there's not a single athlete, uh, professional in, in particular, who has not been through surgeries and this type of thing yeah. before. So if, if one of them slows an athlete down, Man, I know it's something yes. because you guys have been through through all of it before. Yes, man. I mean, all those mini car wrecks finally paid off, man. And I had a big. Uh, this is like I say, man. When I when I went in, Charles Haley, a lot of other people say do both knees, do both knees, but always look at your situation. I I, I should have been a more weary because I'm, I am I am a diabetic high blood, things like that. Take into account, you may want to go one knee, then four weeks out, go to other knees because I had a lot of uh, loss of blood. So, but you know, I'm a, I'm a believer. God brought me through and uh, man, I just feel good, Rad. And I, I'm here, man. It's, and we timed this so perfect, Rad. I mean, we said we'll be back right around the draft. Here it is. Yes, the draft has happened and I'm excited. The playoffs, man, the thunder, the uh, Mavericks are still in contention. I mean, just anything that's connected to me and you. I'm, I, I, what do you want to talk about? What do you, Zeke is well, back with a new number. Yes. I mean, I'm excited. So so here's the thing with the NFL draft being where it is now and with the, uh, uh, you know, playoffs in basketball and in hockey and then Major League Baseball starting yes. April. Now, I've been a sportscaster for 40 years, mm -hmm. Nate. April is the busiest month 
in sports of the year. Wow. It's unbelievable. Just like, hey, just like last night in DFW, fans are sitting there watching, you know, the Stars right. start at 6.30, right. the Rangers at 7, wow. the Mavericks at 9. Wow. And man, that is a full plate of sports right there, <laughs> you know. And uh, we had a pretty good night in, in the DFW because uh, the Stars won and the Mavs killed just killed the clippers so i like that right. we'll talk a little bit more about that uh and we'll talk we will talk oh look at here look what i got nate see my cup yeah mm-hmm. yeah i see your cup man. oklahoma city thunder baby yeah that's who i've been working with this <laughs> off season and uh, we're gonna you. talk about the thunder because they're really good but but we got to go first things first nate yes the cowboys yes what in the heck when we last talked now i did like this when we last talked you said what the cowboys need is a big linebacker a big run stuff and right. linebacker they got to get a linebacker in there who can help slow down these running games and um while they haven't done they did you know they brought in eric kendricks okay yeah. but but while they haven't done a ton in that area what they did do is they change the mentality of the defense because Mike Zimmer came in here, Nate, and Mike Zimmer's whole mentality is exactly what you were saying. Get off of this, you know, a bunch of little scat guys running around being quick and crazy. Get some big hosses in there and and stop the run. The thing, the, the, it's all right to have the great pass rushers, but in this league, one thing you don't want is have a two-way go. Last year, as good a coach as we had, who's with now with the Washington uh, enemy commanders, you know, uh, we let go. Of, well, he got a head coaching job, and I'm not going to call his name because once you leave my beloved Cowboys, your name is not to be mentioned again. But now <laughs> we have Mike Zimmer, who's dedicated to understanding that you dictate to the offense. You can either run or you can pass, but you would not be able to dictate to us both and when you desire to do it. Mike Zimmer has went out and drafted those type guys. Uh, we have pass rushers, and then, uh, but now we have guys that are dedicated to the run. Well, when, we, when we go to practice in, in the spring, I mean, uh, out to uh, Thousand Oaks, California, we will see people dedicated to run stop, and we will have a unit that will run in on first and second down and run situations where these guys are going to be dedicated first to stopping the run because, Rad, listen to me now. Listen to me. Let me tell y'all something. Yeah. And I've told everybody this, and this is what confirmed it for me. They had Love, the quarterback for the, the Green Bay Packers, young guy, tell Michael Parsons on his – podcast. You can go back and get it. Streaming. That's one thing about streaming. You can pull it back up. He said, all we wanted to do was when we got in a tight and it was a, and it was a, uh, uh, anyway, uh, I call it anyway down where you run a pass. They said, we just going to run y'all. We was just going to run the ball over the last seven to eight years. Whenever you wanted to beat the Dallas Cowboys, whenever we got in big game situations, Tight situations, team just ran the ball. They dictated when they was going to pass, but they mostly just ran the ball. Zim is going to stop that. That is our first-round pick. They got Tyler Gotten, but our first-round pick is Zim. He's, he's going he's yeah. gonna, to gonna be a factor in what we do doing against the run this year. Yeah, yeah, and, that, and that's kind of exactly what I was saying, Nate. It'll, it'll change – philosophically yes. now uh which again is huge and do you have the players i mean i think there probably are the players in place uh and then the, you know they did draft a couple of more their second pick was a now he was he's kind of more of a pass rusher that marsh marshawn nealand uh but uh you know he's a he's a defensive end say so you know you, you may push him over there to stop the run you do whatever you can uh you know to get bigger and to get better at that right oh yeah you know what most of these guys if you look at their totals, they're not sack guys. They're not sack guys. They're they're guys that does have heavy hands. What I mean by that, they jamming. They getting their hands inside, and they looking for run stop first, and they run to the ball with high mm-hmm. motors. What you look for, if you can't get that pure pass rusher, is you look for that guy that has that high motor. You know, a guy that with a high motor that's always jamming, looking for that ball, he can turn into a pass rusher. You can get pass rush uh, 
uh, goodness out of a guy like that. They, they may not never be great as pass rushers, but they will have that ability to to rush the passer along with that ability to stop the run. And those are the type of guys that he got in, in, in Marshawn and, the, and, and and even in the cornerbacks that he got uh, – Yep. You, you know, these guys can come up. Uh, Carleen Carson, four years. Carson, yeah. yeah. Th- these guys yeah. played four years at weight. These guys are going to come up and be physical. And that is what we've been lacking in games where teams dictated us. Zim is not going to let that happen. You may run, you may throw for 400 yards, but not, you're not going to have another 150 yards rushing. You may rush for 400 yards, but you're going to have another 250 yards passing. You're going to have to get them one, one way or other so they can dictate to you, and I think that's what Zim is going to bring to this team. All right, so big picture. Uh, I, I like that. We talked about the defense and how we definitely think uh, just with the, that first-round pick, as you said, Mike Zimmer, it'll be improved. But big picture. Nate, and you've been around this thing a little longer than I have because, well, in fact, you, you telegraphed it earlier. You've been around it so long, you think they're still going to Thousand Oaks for training yes, camp. Yes, I they, they stopped that. doing yeah, that yeah. in 1990. <laughs> yeah, they're going to Oxnard. Oxnard, they're going, right up the road, baby. It's only, it's only you 25 minutes. You minute. go past. Yeah, it's only you 25 minutes up the road. Well, get, I went back then. I yeah. went back to Landry on you then. Wow. You did. You went back. <laughs> Man, so that's how long you've been around. Yeah. I've been around almost as long. Wow. My first year covering Cowboy Training Camp was that first year in Austin. Yes. But anyway, um, in that time that I've been here, Nate, I have never seen the Cowboys fan base as disgruntled and upset about an off season as they've been this year. Now the Cowboys let eight walk, right? right. They let eight people yes. leave the organization in free agency, and they really haven't done a lot. They brought Zeke back this week. We mentioned that, and they they brought in Eric Kendricks, as we said, but they haven't done a lot to recoup what they lost. They're hoping they'll get some of, of that out of the draft. But but what about this off season? I mean, it, it feels like the Cowboys are depleted and significantly worse than they were last year. Brad, do you want the truth? Yes, I do. Can you handle the truth? I can handle the truth. This is a... I want you on that wall. This is a rebuild. This has nothing yeah. to do with can you win 12 to 13 games. This is a, this is a rebuild. You have two uh, young offensive linemen you drafted in the first three rounds. You have... Uh, Another guy you drafted in, this, in, in, in the seventh round, uh, a guy that we're going to try to put at center. This is a rebuild. This is about trying to uh, rededicate yourself and rebuild yourself and your image to being a more physical team. Uh, you got C.D. Lamb. They talk about resigning him. They talk about resigning Dak. This is a rebuild, my brother. We let a lot of people walk. If you wasn't under contract, Jonathan Hankins, how do you let your one run stopping guy leave? You 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 asking for Mozzie Smith to stand up and, and, and put on back another 25 pounds that he lost last year and be and be that run stop. You asking for him to reset his mind. This is a rebuild. This is about changing your culture. And that is what Mike Solari, Zim. Mike Solari is offensive line coach. Zim is your offensive and defensive coordinator. And Coach McCarthy, I believe in him. I think he's here uh, even after this year because you don't want to change. This thing is a rebuild. You don't want to go out and get a new head coach. So this is a, uh, I don't know if you want to call it a soft rebuild, a slow rebuild, but this is a rebuild altogether. You let too many people walk that were uh, pertinent in what we did as a defense and offense last year. Okay, so... Along those lines, and you mentioned, you know, Coach McCarthy, he's on the last year of a deal. That's right. Zim has a one-year deal. Dak has not been signed up for after next year. That's right. C.D. Lamb has not been signed up. They did exercise the option on Micah Parsons for at least a couple more years. But um, do I read into this that in this first year of a rebuild, if things don't go as planned, any or all of those men – who are on the last year of a deal could be gone? Yes. I mean, uh, trade it uh, or whatever, because there was, we have never been in the last seven years, six years, never been in a rush with free agency. But during the second week, we always signed someone to let people know that, okay, 
this is the better quality guy for the money that we have stored away for this. They, they didn't even bother. I mean, I'm asking the Cowboy fans to look at the truth. Look at what is real. They, did, they didn't. Zeke is our biggest offseason acquisition. Uh, they shouldn't have never let him go. I told everybody last year, forget about, oh, we don't want to hurt his feelings by offering him three mil. Guess what he just took? Guess what he played for last year? Guess what he took playing for this year? Zeke likes football. He loves football. He's a team guy. You shouldn't have let him get out of the building last year. That way we could have got more out of Tony Pollard because our offensive line was getting older. But, mm-hmm. but be it that, Zeke is our biggest acquisition. Uh, I like what he brings to the room. I like what he does for, his, for the team mentality because that fits in with what Zim and Mike Solari is. That's toughness. That's greatness. But this is what it is. It's a rebuild. Handle it. Deal with it. Don't get don't don't let everybody say, oh, we run into the Super Bowl. Yeah, you run into the Super Bowl, all right, on a rebuild. So where do the expectations sit then? The expectations sit. You know, Pete, I think that the Cowboys can make the playoffs. It will be a struggle because now you got two new offensive linemen. Uh, you got a, a right tackle that's in his second year off of a major knee surgery. You got an aging right right guard that still got all, all pro written all over him if he's healthy. Uh, but you got to find the center. You yeah. you got to find the center. And, and they say it's, uh BB is this guy. Yeah, Cooper BB. Yeah, but you know yeah. what? Hoffman has something to say about that now. TJ Bass has something to say about that. It's going to be very – for the first time, I think in two or three years, we got – competitive guys that's going to, if the coaches do it right, we don't have enough young guys, I mean, enough old guys where guys can be missing practice. If you're going to start BB at center, he should be taking snaps right now. If he got a wife or a little kid, he should have his hands between daddy's legs, a wife, a husband, <laughs> leg, huh, 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 yeah, snapping that ball. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being honest. Yeah. Because you cannot afford to be into the middle of the season. We can't wait till the first uh, regular season game and say, oh, he really can't play center. Now, we need to know this, and we need to know it now. You know, give him every True. snap. Let him and Hoffman battle this thing out right now, or T.J. Bass or whoever you're going to put in there. Yeah. All right, so that's great. Uh, the the all-in comments from Jerry Jones obviously misled uh, such a large, uh, you know, percentage of cowboy fans. They they took him at his word, and and uh, that is uh, I, that's something, right? When you've been around Jerry as much as you have, um, y- you recognize and realize that that sometimes he says things that are good for other parts of the organization, right? Marketing or or this or that or the other thing, and not necessarily uh, what is the actual fact of what is happening. Is that, is that sort of what happened here? The, the, the thing is, uh, Mr. Jones is always going to be excited. He was excited when he was getting ready to go to Arkansas and he was selling tennis shoes at the back of his car. He was excited. He was telling everybody, you know, he had the best tennis shoes. You didn't have to go to Kmart or JC Penney's to get these shoes or <laughs> Sears, Roebuck, them, them, them stores back when I was growing up. You know what I'm saying? You didn't have to go to that and get the blue light special. He had it right in the back of his car at half the price. He was excited. He probably sold every pair. Had you believe that you had original shoes and you bust out them in less than two months, but that's how it is. <laughs> if you cannot understand, see, let me say something to you, Rad. Let me tell you something. There's podcasts and then there's podcasts. Come to, if you want the truth and you can handle the truth, come see John Radigan and Nate Newton and let me tell you something. This is a rebuild, folks. This is a rebuild. Yeah. If Mike McCarthy can bring us to 10 games, uh, nine games, or 11 games, he, can, he should have another contract because you got a new defensive coordinator. You got a great offensive line coach. Now, you you know, that, that, that that's what it is. It's a soft rebuild. You know, really, it's a hard rebuild, but I just want to give a soft blow. You know what I'm saying? To the, to yeah, the fans. Yeah. I, I, I'm your, yeah. I, I'm the reason why I'm the stability. You know, me and you, Rad, we're going to bring the truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, yeah. So do you believe, Nate, that that was the plan from 
you know, basically the day after uh, the Green, Ga- Green Bay game? Oh, yeah. When they sat down a week, a day or two after, like, where are we right now? They, they had to, it, it starts with the money. Okay. 60 million for a quarterback. Uh, 21, 22 million for a defensive end slash linebacker. 21 million at most for a wide receiver. Can we afford this? Okay, big money came for the salary cap. A lot of teams jumped on it. You you see the Giants. You seen Philadelphia went out and he stole the Giants running back. You see uh, guys move around, but you also saw Buffalo let uh, a great wide receiver yeah. go. So it, it's just all about <laughs> what you want to do. Do you want to build a team? Uh, do you have a quarter? Because it's all predicated on the quarterback. The Bills went mm-hmm. out and found them a, a wide receiver in the draft that they they, they, they think they, they can replace Diggs. Okay, that's all and well. What are you saying is that your quarterback is capable of enough of, of, of carrying your team. Well, we see who Dak is. Dak is a great regular season quarterback, but Dak needs that uh, super receiver. He needs uh, C.D. Lamb. Uh, he needs Brandon Cook. He needs the good tight end that we have. All we have to do now is put a, 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 a offensive line in place so we don't have to put that pressure on Dak when the playoffs come. But now do you give him $60 million a year? I don't know that. I, I, I'm not going to say yeah or nay, but let his body of work during the playoffs speak for itself. So um, anybody who's ever met Dak, you, yourself, me, and, and the, the guys in the locker room, you get such a feeling from that guy. Yes. He is he is so great in that room. He's He's just very interpersonal, very easy to get along with, friendly, great guy. Everybody that knows him and, and knows him well loves him. And and even those of us who I just know him from the you know periphery a little bit. He's just a great guy. There's nothing not to like about Dak Prescott, the human being. Um, it's hard to weigh in on this, but we're going to speak the truth. Can he take that step and be that guy that's good in the playoffs as well, Nate? It's been eight years. Yeah, it's been eight years. Uh, he had a hell of a great uh, regular season last year. He grew yeah. into a, the guy that we thought, but he 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 panicked in the playoffs. That's when you should be cool as ice water, my brother. That's when you should be a Alaskan snowcap or iceberg. As you see an iceberg, you see very little on the top. But if you look up in the water, you'll see like two miles of ice because he's so cool and so smooth. And that's how Troy used to be. And he's not Troy. And so that's don't get it twisted. But that is what he has to do. He should have calmed himself and and, and, and started uh, uh, just showing people who he is. And it's been eight years Uh so now you have to make a hell of a decision, uh, Mr. Jones, Mr. Stephen Jones, uh, Miss Charlie Jones, uh, Will McClay. Y'all have to sit down and say, do we get this guy $50 million a year or do we continue to build our team and, 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 and just see where he's at? If Dak wants, you know, Minnesota cut their losses with, with Cousins. And even when Cousins went to, went to Atlanta, they gave him 180 mil. Most are guaranteed, but they say, we know we're going to find us a young guy. Uh, I don't know what they got on the roster uh, with these young guys, uh, but this is a, this 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 could be a back-breaking move if they sign Dak to big money and he doesn't perform in the playoffs. What are you looking at? What are, What is mm-hmm. your future? Because you got a lot mm-hmm. of money wrapped up and guys still need to be paid. Yeah. Yeah, boy, it's a decision that I am so glad I do not have to make. And again, obviously, the Jones family and all those the Joneses and Will McClay that you mentioned, they know him way better than we do. He's he's such a likable guy, but you can't just you can't just re-sign him because you like him. Yes. Right? You have to re-sign him because you have confidence he can take you to that next level. And again, Nate, uh, most of the quarterbacks who have had really good success in the playoffs. They're generally younger than what what Dak is already. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, you know, you know, you don't want to smear a guy's name. You don't want to 
but I'm, I'm about performance. Potential is great in your first two years. You know, I look at Matt Lewasco and a few other guys that play on the offensive line. Uh, great potential. Potential will get you fired. Bill Parcells mm-hmm. has tried to preach that. All of his uh, disciples that have come under him knows this, believes in this. Potential will get you fired every time. Performance. After two years, a guy like Mozzie. Mozzie can't come in here this year uh, stumbling, bumbling. Then he, he got to be gone next year because potential, what we saw at Michigan, does not count in the NFL. This thing, this league is not for long. That's what NFL mean, not for long. You know, if you can't perform up to a certain standard, you gone. Uh, uh, you know, see, the advantages that quarterbacks have, there's only maybe 10 or 12 good quarterbacks in the league. So you're scared when you don't get one of those guys because if they're gone, you 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 got an average you got an average guy a uh, below average guy and you got to make a decision, you know do you build your team up and wait on this guy like a lot of uh, better teams in the league have done, or do you go out and get one of these ten or twelve guys and overpay? Well, that's don't have, that does not go for linebackers. That does not go for defensive linemen. That does not go for most offensive linemen. You either have it, get paid. I don't have it and just shuffle around the league. And uh, right now, that's the situation a lot of guys are in. Well, it's a it's a remarkably interesting offseason already. And I think the fact that, as we mentioned, so many of the guys are on that last year of the deal. Um, it's it's really going to be telling, isn't it, If to see if the Cowboys do some sort of a reworking or an extension of Dak or an, uh, an extension of C.D. Lamb before training camp, isn't it? I mean, that, that will tell us a lot about the short-term direction sort of after the rebuild. Yes, correct? yes. Uh, do you want to go into 2025? 2024, I'm not looking for big things. I'm looking for Mike McCarthy uh, to put in place uh, a growth plan of where he wants this offensive line to be by eight and nine games in. How is he going to use his plethora of running backs? You know, uh, how is he going to continue to develop C.D. Lamb uh, and other young guys, that the wide receivers that took steps last year? How is he going to do that? Uh, I'm, you know, I, I'm not a, a guy that just falls into, okay, we are the Dallas Cowboys, you know, who haven't been to a, the second round of the playoffs in over 30 years. I'm, I'm not one of those. Uh, I'm not gullible. I'm, I'm, I'm a realist. I've won. I know what it takes to rebuild. I know what the attitude it takes. So, and I, and like I say to people, uh, you know, no, no knock on what has happened because Mike McCarthy is giving you 12 wins the last two years. But he's going to have to do a masterful job of getting you 10, 11 wins this year. A masterful job. Look at it. You, look, you pull up the schedule. You pull it up, Rad, and you, you can see disaster written all over it. You can't stumble in yeah. the first half of this season and, and hope to recover. Mm-hmm. No. No, it's a great point. Uh, well, that's wonderful, man. That's a great thumbnail of what has happened thus far in the offseason. When we get together, and let me tell you something, you know we're always talking Cowboys, and we will. But, uh, Nate, Nate, you, like the rest of the Metroplex, has, has jumped on board, as you should, with this Dallas Mavericks team that finished the regular season 16-2, and two, right? Their last 18 games. Yes. 16-2. and two. Mm-hmm. What we're seeing is, <coughs> excuse me, we're seeing uh, we're seeing um, Luca and Kyrie get along so well, and we're seeing a presence in the middle mm-hmm. with Daniel Gafford and and the young fella. And I wonder if they um, uh, have caught your attention and and are you are you buying into this Mavericks group? They're up in the series with the Clippers now after winning out there. The, the, the thing that. Uh amazes me is Jason Kidd and the ownership have done a masterful job, masterful job of soothing Kyrie 
of yeah. of of allowing Kyrie and Luca to 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 mash and to become uh, uh, special. A, a, a lot of guys. I haven't watched a lot of basketball, especially when I went down with these knees. Uh, that's all I had was the playoffs, and I just basically watched it and study nobody. But my hats off is to Jason Kidd and the way he's defined everybody role uh where their upper management is went out and got guys uh who have uh stepped up and, and did what they had to do. Uh you see where they have uh made adjustments to uh Harden. They've made adjustments uh to the other guy uh that that is uh Paul George. And so Paul George yes, yeah. they've made adjustments and, and that comes from coaching man. That comes from coaching, being able to relate to your players, doing what you have to do. They, they, they say, you know what? We, we still see. Let, let's go back to the to the beginning. No one projected the Dallas uh, Mavericks to be in this playoff run where they're located right now. No one projected that. Now everybody will go out and tell you, "Oh yeah, we, we, we knew the the, the Mavericks would be." And no, you didn't. Cause half the Metroplex was like, why did we? Oh, why did we sign Kyrie? Oh, and half other half was like, Lord Jesus, if we can just, but they they found a way, and, 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 and more like McCarthy has to do the same. They like you said, it was sixteen and four closing out the season, and then the first playoff game against the Clippers was disastrous, and it yes. was no Kyrie. And, and and they came back and did what they had to do, and this was a pivotal fifth game. And what they beat them one hundred and twenty three to to to, to ninety three. Beat them by thirty. Yeah, man, beat the draws off them. Man. Like we used to say back in the day, I hope I ain't offending nobody. Beat the draws off them. <laughs> and, 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 and that goes off. You know, Luca said after that loss, they're like, "Wow, I'm letting Kyrie down." Well, he let Kyrie set tempo the other night, and he just followed in. And then he enforced yeah. his will at the end of the game when he needed to slow it down. My hat's off to him. And the two centers they got. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God, man. The two centers yeah. they got is uh, it's un- unbelievable in rim protecting, guys doing their jobs, uh, being who they have to be. Uh, what, what are you going to do, Rad? What, what are you going to do? He- Here's what I'm going to do first is I'm going to give you two other people who deserve credit uh-huh. on the Kyrie thing. Right. OK. One is is Nico Harrison, their general manager, yes. who kind of saw this thing, you know, being possible. Mm-hmm. Nico's done a great job there. But the other person, Nate, uh-huh. is Kyrie. Yes. It's Kyrie. Because mm-hmm. he could have come in here. You, we see when he took over in that 30, they lost that game where they were down 31, came all the way back to take the lead and then ended up losing it. But uh, game four, I guess that was at home. But Kyrie took over that game. They never get back in that game if Kyrie doesn't take that game over. You see what he can do. And yet he realizes, man, this thing is Lucas, and I'm going to be over here and I'm going to be ready to do whatever I need to do. And that is not easy for a, a superstar. He's a superstar. Yes, Nate. Yes. It's not easy for a superstar, is it, to sort of uh, take a back seat, if you will, like that in any way? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I tell you, man, it just reminds me of, of Michael Irvin, who was like the heart and soul of our team. But <laughs> Troy was our leader. You know, it was it was unquestionable, but you would see Michael Irvin take over some time and get in place, and and that is a testament to Luca growth. You know, yeah. uh, now Luca ain't gonna never stop crying to no refs. He ain't gonna never stop begging Sadly, and whining. No. So ignore that. Uh, learn to ignore that. That's just who he is. Uh, that's just uh, super. That's his little thing as a superstar. That's his little kick a little side advice that I'm going to complain. I don't care. Let that happen. He's, he's smart yeah. enough to know when to back up and shut up. So, but he's out, but he, but for him to grow and let, and let his guy that's second to him, they want to call him Robbins, do what he has to do, man. But you know, Washington Jones, all of these guys yeah. have, oh man, my cat's off to Jason Kidd. Being yes. able to make yeah. adjustments, man. When they took that 31-point lead, you saw automatically Jason Kidd say, you know what, pick the pace up. 
Let's go. Let's go. And he knew who, Kyrie, I need you now. I need you to pick this yeah. pace up. Luca, let him pick yeah. this pace up. And they took that into the fifth game. That is a very pivotal game. You're over 80% when you win that fifth game. So now all they got to do is come back home and handle their business. And that's yeah. going to gonna be the backbreaker, man. Yeah. And, 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 no, that's, that's, and it's, that's exactly right. And it's yeah. too simple when you know if we start even – and we go to the halftime tied up or down two points, we got enough depth they can't handle us. The Mavericks has enough depth and a good enough coach that you can't handle us. God forbid the Mavericks get a five or six or ten-point lead going into the half. It, they threw. Uh, Harden is playing his best playoff basketball he could play. George is playing his best playoff basketball. But Kyrie – like Dak, they got to make a decision on him. They got to mm. make a decision on the Clippers. Got to make a decision on him. If if you're gonna keep giving a guy thirty, forty million dollars for not for not playing, showing up in the playoffs, even though every team, whether you Denver, whether you Philadelphia, whether you the Knicks, every team has lost players in the yeah. playoffs. And now it's coming down to your coach and your star players. To adjust and you may, and do you have enough depth? That's why the Suns are sitting home. You had three yep. players that could not mash. You're gonna blame it on your head coach, which he's not the problem when you know you needed a point guard. I mean, come on, man. Management can't be that stupid. Oh, no. oh can they? Maybe they can, because what they've done in that league, Nate, in that league, they have let uh the the team be run, if you will. From the bottom up, yes. right? From the players up. Instead of from the top, the ownership and the general manager down, a lot of these teams are run from the bottom up, uh, which, again, the bottom, those dudes make more I, money anyway. You, I, can LeBron, deal with, you know? I can deal with players moaning and groaning, but I can't deal with owners that can't get out the way. And I'm going to jump all the way to something that's another sport, I feel so bad for the head coach, Frank, Frank uh, I can't think of his name, he got fired by the Panthers. This coach wanted the kid that is down in Houston for his number one pick. Management yep. overrode him. You bring in a coach who's a quarterback guru. He tells you he wants the kid in Houston. You say no and get the kid from Bama. Guess what? He saw something. You didn't trust in him. Frank Vogel came in and said, I need a point guard. I'm begging for a point guard. You tell him that Bradley Bill is your point guard. Really? An ultra yeah. number two? An ultra number two? You had three number twos running around there in Phoenix, you know, and, and you never gave Frank Vogel. You fire Frank Vogel. That is dumb. Get him a yeah. guard and let him work. Uh, yeah. It's just amazing how it used to be general managers, uh, player personnel guys that you could ha how are you going to fire somebody you never gave them the proper tools? Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow, man. I, I can go yeah. on and on. You know, people yeah. say how Mr. Well, Jones dibble and dabble, but for the most part, Stephen, Will McClay, and guys like that, and his, and they're, they're, they're making a lot of calls, and they're bringing the information to Mr. Jones, and 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 and, and I've never known him just to say, go, hey man, I don't care what y'all say. Yeah, even with even with Atlanta and, and and what they did there, and getting the kid out of Washington, they they told their owner, hey man. We're going to get our future quarterback. And in two years, if he's playing, we can let this guy go. If not, we still got a guy. You know, because Atlanta got pieces in place. But they want to yep. give it a shot with a guy that's, that's got, some, got, got some moxie to him. I, I, I've never been about fans or players choosing players. Troy, as great as he is, choose, he chose a couple of tight ends and they was garbage. <laughs> Come on, man. Yes. Yeah. You as the that's why you that's why you get millions and millions and billions of dollars of of of, of, of letting people scout all over the country 24-7. Yeah. And then you don't and then you okay, come draft day. Oh yeah, but we won't, we don't want that guy. 
and you get for you fire yeah. Frank Wright. Is that the guy that was for the Panthers? You fire him, but the guy down in Houston lighting it up. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. No, I agree. I agree. You've got to let your football, and I think you're right. I think Jerry does do this, right? Yes. Uh, if if J- Jerry lets his football people, you know, uh, sway him, yeah. let him, you know, at least at least help him. St- make if the you decision. stand up on the table for a guy, Jerry gonna hold you accountable for it. If you yeah. all up on the table, man, you know, undress yourself, you know, got butt naked and hollering and screaming down, up and down the table, Jerry gonna say, "All right, bet your life on it, bet your kids and your family on it." Because if it don't work, I'm getting rid of you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But you yeah. didn't even give Frank Wright a chance, man. I'm not saying this kid couldn't have came to the Panthers <laughs> and changed something. But, man, I would I would at least would have gave my my head, my head coach opportunity to have the guy he wanted. Yeah, he sure made a quick change in Houston. Yes, he did. We weren't expecting that out of them. Yes. Wow. Right? And they're going to be good this year, yes. too. Um. All right, so if the Mavs win, the, right now they're like the l- only lower seed in the playoffs that's having any success. The the higher seeds in, in the playoffs uh, are across the board in the NBA are doing better. It's early. Uh, but uh, anyway, if the Mavs win, this is who they take on, Nate. Uh, Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, I've been doing Thunder uh, – pre and post game shows for 15 years in the in the baseball off season did them this year again i know you've watched some thunder oh yes uh, and believe it or not and i've enjoyed it this is a great organization they do a great job they've rebuilt like that okay mm-hmm. but here's the thing i'm not sure i'm sure i think the mavs are one of the teams that can actually take this number one seed that just swept through the first round i think the mavs could take them down mm-hmm. and here's why Here's why. That, yeah. Chet Holmgren is a great player. He is going to be a superstar in this league. But the Oklahoma City Thunder, if they have a weakness, it is inside. Okay. The Mavs have not only one, but two guys, Gafford and Lively, that they can throw at the inside, right? And they and and by the way, those guys can go out with. Chet Holmgren, because he'll do that on you. He'll try to draw you outside because he wants to get you away from the basket. Well, you know, they can do that when when the Mavericks, I mean, the uh, Thunder just swept the the, uh, New Orleans Pelicans. You know, Jonas Valachunas can't do that. He can't go out. He's got to stay by the basket. These guys can do that. They can hang with Chet wherever he runs around like a crazy man. Mm -hmm. But they have much more beef and much more strength, and, and, and they are a team. Uh, and there's, I don't think there's that many that have that that double whammy seven inside. Feet one, but I think that double whammy is going to help him, Nate. Seven feet one, two hundred eight pounds. But you're saying he ain't heavy enough yet. He ain't strong enough. He's not. He's and he, he's not strong enough. I mean, and this dude, Nate, this dude is unbelievably talented. He is. He is like Victor mm. uh, Wembanyama. He can. I'm telling you, I've seen this cat uh, uh, take a rebound, come down the floor, dribble between his legs, mm-hmm. work around somebody, and you know, lay it up in or either dunk it. And um, he, he is. He's a magician. He's fantastic. He's just in his first year playing. He he was on the team last year, but hurt the whole year. He's fantastic, but he just needs to get bigger and stronger and more forceful in the middle. And he will. I think well, he will. Well, I you, mean, they've got know, a great Brad, strength I, and conditioning program. And I see your lords is swinging over us old 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 old, old donches and his partners and all of that. But, but how did these guys become number one seeded if they given up all of this disadvantage that you're talking about? You saying well, this again, it's not, it's, is not, it's not enough? a disadvantage with most teams. And the cat, he did the, unbelievably. He had really good games. Uh, believe this or not, against Jokic, mm-hmm. who is the best at that position mm-hmm. and who also can ro- chase you around as a big man, right? right? right. So he rose. To that level, uh, three times this year when they played Denver, and they mm-hmm. lost two of them, mm-hmm. but he played well, right? Yes. Which is which is a good sign. That said, most teams in the NBA anymore don't have that sort of dominant big man. Everybody, you know, everybody on most teams is like a six eight everything, right? 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 right. They can, they're all six eight, and they can all do everything, mm-hmm. and and that's sort of the, the 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 way teams are built in the league. But now you get these big fellas like Wembenyama mm-hmm. and and like right. Chet Holmgren. I'm not saying Chet's won't be a great player. He will be unbelievable. But I you're think saying he right and now, 
He's don't ha- have the experience. He doesn't. I don't. I think this Mavericks team is one of the very few uh, that could beat the. Th- well, and I, and I think the Celtics would beat them or probably anybody else this year too. They're highly motivated, but uh, but this Mavericks team, I think, is is a team in the West. You know, in Denver, obviously, Denver could beat the Thunder too. But Oklahoma uh, those, those, City. Yeah, they're good, man. Fifty-seven they're really good. and twenty-five. And you know why they're good? Regular season. At the last yeah. minute, they had enough ahead of Denver. Minnesota yep. Timberwolves, who coach is a great, has a great coach. I, I, I yeah. just, and you were saying that your Dallas Mavericks, now since you're going to switch back over, your Dallas yeah. Mavericks got enough to, to thump at these boys. I think they do. I think if that they, double whammy inside is enough to do it okay. because they also have, you know, what the, what the, Thunder uh, have too, obviously, is they have really good guard play. They're, so their best three players mm-hmm. are Chet Holmgren, mm-hmm. Shea Gilgis Alexander right. is, you know, an all star starter this year and a superstar. And then, um, you know, they got two Jalen Williams. This one they call J Dub. Right. And he's a big, he's a big old 6'6 guard, you know, uh, same thing with Shea. He's a big 6'6 guard, 6'7 maybe. And and these big fellas are really good in the backcourt. Well, so are Kyrie Irving, even though he's a little smaller, and Luka Doncic, right? right? So you match them there. And if you can outdo Chet with your double whammy at the big point, you know, that that's a post position, you know, you've got a, 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 an opportunity. Now, I'm afraid about Luca. I will say this because that knee, even though he he was sick in Game Five and still came through fairly well, that knee's problematic. He doesn't look the same. Um, so hopefully they'll be able to get him some, you know, some healing on that knee. But the thing uh, but that I, I think that the Mavs can beat him. Yeah. The thing that I see with your Thunder team is Shea. What is his name? Shea. All these first names and eight yeah. last names. Hey, pronounce yeah. that for me. You'll just Alexander. I mean, Alexander the Great. When, yeah. when the last time you seen a guy who who just can distribute the ball, can take over a game when he needs to, like Luca, big enough to get in there with Luca. He's he's gonna be uh, force Luca to play both offensively and defensively. With that knee, that could be a problem. They have big yeah. enough guys that could their guard position to 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 go at your at your other at your Robin for the other. Uh, these kids don't fear. They got no. home court advantage. And the way this thing look, one team is gonna be rested and one team is gonna be That's beat right. up. I'm never a fan of rest. I'm really well, not okay, I, I am because you saw where the uh the 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 one time they were rested, and I'm talking about your Mavericks. Okay, they looked at bad one games, but this is a seven game series. Yeah. So you got the win. No, you got true. the win on the other guy's court, which they did. Yeah. And now yeah. you just bring it on home, and you close it out to get you some rest. But if you don't yeah. close this it's, thing, that's you're you, gonna be. You beat make up. a good point. It's not like the NFL. I'm really against rest in the NFL right. because it's one game, right? right? And you're out. Right. And this, this, you do have a seven game right. series to prove yourself. Um, and and you make great you make great points about the Thunder because here's the thing: they played four games against the Pelicans. They played, you know, obviously 48 minutes every game. Right. They played 48 minutes of defense. Every game. I've never seen a team that didn't have a defensive lapse right, at all right. in four game series. It's crazy, but they're like you said, they're young. They are, Nate, the youngest team in the history of the NBA to advance in the playoffs. And, and see, so you know, and, and I, I'm gonna say this, man, Orlando, whoo, Orlando, yeah. man, if if, if they want to take a bad shot with about three minutes uh, left in the game, they, their main guy want to take a bad three point shot. This thing could have been different. Uh, yeah. Cleveland, to have the veterans that they have and not smashing Orlando, that's that, that, that's, that don't bode well. Uh, I mean, I, yeah. I watch enough basketball just uh, to understand uh, what is happening here. And I look at your thunder. Uh, they fear nothing. No. And see, that's what Jimmy had us when we played. Uh, we feared nothing. You you got to show us, Rad. I mean, potential is everything when it's when it's glued together with performance. And these guys with that 
with Alexander the Great, you call him Gildress, this, that, and the other. And then, oh my yeah. God, he's got like seven, uh, seven initials. I, I mean, this I, I should have more respect for this young kid. But but until you get uh, to the next round, uh, and see, but, but, because everybody gets a little better, and uh, I'm hoping they face the Mavericks. I don't want to because uh, I don't like how this team is ran the Clippers uh, because. They remind me too much of the Cowboys. A lot of great preseason, a lot of great preseason, regular season guys. But when we get to the playoffs, oh, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and you got and to pay to these point, guys. Yeah, and to your point, Kawhi Leonard. You know, God bless him. He just he he can't he can't answer the bell. You know, and and that so often. And when he does, he's spectacular. But he he hasn't been yes. so. Uh, yeah, they are, and they, so they're not a threat. The Mavericks are more of a threat yes, they than are. they are, and and uh, Jason would give Kidd, us a better series against, Luka, would give, make a better series Kyrie. against the Thunder. I think they, they have pieces, man. They have, uh, and I'm not a Mavericks fan, y'all, but I am a realist. That won't let me tell yeah. you something. I throw all of that who I like and don't like out of the window. You are gonna get the truth and nothing but the truth because you're looking at John Rad and Nate Newton, baby. We have nothing but the truth. We we bring it to you this way because we want you to see what you're missing. When we, when, I'm not Stephen A. I'm not that articulate. I don't have an inside scoop to these people. Nobody but the thunder. That's the, that comes from Rad. We have an inside on that. Other than that, we have an inside on the Cowboys. I don't have an inside with the Mavericks. I can call Chuck Cooperstein, but he's busy this time of the year. I, I told him, I said, I text him, said, Chuck, I'm listening to you. He, oh, thanks for being so kind. I want some inside. News, Coop. I don't th- yeah, I know <laughs> I'm give it to you. Give me some scoop, Coop, Coop. Big Coop will give it to yeah. you. Yeah, but uh, he will. Hey, hey, it's a, that's a great place to end it, Nate, because that is the truth. We're going to speak the truth. Uh, we we have told you what we think. We have gotten back on this. Uh, let me tell you something, horse, and we're ready to gallop, Nate. Yes. Yeah. Oh, did I sound like a horse? <laughs> 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 Fantastic, my brother. I'm glad we're I'm glad we're back together, and uh, and we'll we'll do it again next week. Thank you, Rad. I love you. Thank you, Spencer Bass, our producer. And we're looking for sponsors, baby, because we will tell you something, and we will make you number one, and your product yeah. will glow on our show. <laughs> <laughs>